You know when people on YouTube are like, you should get a snack, like get a drink, get a snack and settle in because it's going to be a long video. I got a snack. I literally was like, I need a snack because it's going to be a long video, if that tells you anything. Do people even say that on YouTube anymore? I feel like all people say is TikTok. <laughs> look at this. Transition. Now look at this. The end. But not today, Satan. Today. I am actually daunted by my own Picard. <laughs> I have like 30 pieces of skincare here and I'm actually not sure I'm going to get through it all. But... I'm going to get through some of it. The situation is this. I use more skincare at one time than a normal person, and that's because brands are sending it to me to review. And every once in a while, I like to just sit down and spill the beans about everything that I've been testing. I think that all of this is probably PR. If anything comes up that isn't, if anything comes up that I bought myself, I'll tell you. The things that I buy myself religiously that I just use over and over again, first of all, they tend to end up in my empties. So they get covered in other places on my channel. And this isn't empties. These are products that I'm like in the middle of using, getting to know that I'm literally testing now. And then the other thing about products that I tend to buy for myself and use religiously is that I tend to have talked about them. And the point of this video is to let you know what I'm finding out about products that I've been using but I haven't told you about yet, that I haven't yet reviewed on my channel, basically. Almost all of these things are things that I haven't talked about. I've just been squirreling away knowledge and I'm going to share it with you or as much as I can manage before we all just turn to dust because of having been here for so long. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you enjoy this one. This is the kind of video I would say it's like you're cooking, you're chopping vegetables and I'm on in the background. You're, you're knitting. I don't know, you're sweet you're having makeup playtime in the evening. Maybe you're in the bath, living your best life. Not all of my videos are like this. Some of them are a little bit snappier and more produced. Really enjoy working in the world of beauty, but I try to stay grounded. I try not to promote overspending. If that sounds good and you like this, I hope you'll subscribe. And now <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I feel like I was off to the side for the whole intro. Is that true? All right, I need to get myself together. Feel the beat of the rhythm of the night. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm reapplying my lip gloss before we even start. Is there gonna be any rhyme or reason? I feel like there has to be. I'm doing the most. I'm gonna try to group like products together. Oh yeah, this grouping thing was a great idea. This is gonna be a banger. Okay, all the products are grouped and it's feeling very approachable. I'm feeling very optimistic. First category. Body, what am I going to call it? Basically like body acne solutions, right? Exfoliating body products because randomly, I mean, the reason that I have three of them is a little bit random. The fact that brands, three brands sent this kind of thing to me because I don't think they sent them because they knew that I've been dealing with this, but I have. So I am acne prone. It's just hormonal. It's how my body is. Off and on over the course of my adult life, I've had blemishes like small clogged pores on my chest and upper back. And lately, I would say by lately, I mean like over the past six or seven months, maybe even longer, it's kind of come back. So it's been exciting to have three products that are designed to handle that to test. So we have the Glytone Exfoliating Body Wash, a chemical exfoliant. When I say exfoliating body wash, it might have made you think tenses, tense disagreement. When I said exfoliating body wash, it might have made you think that it has little scrubbies in it, but it doesn't. It's just a chemical exfoliant. So it says it's 8.8 .8 PFAV glycolic acid. I'm not sure what that 8.8 .8 PFAV thing means, but it, it has a hefty dose of glycolic acid in it. It says it on the back, 8.8 .8 free acid value of glycolic acid. It's just a lot of glycolic acid, okay? It smooths bumps, it gets in the pores and scours them. It's the kind of thing you want to be using if you have body acne. But the thing to know about this is that it's just a foaming body wash. It Again, it doesn't physically exfoliate, it doesn't scrub and smooth the skin that way. It's like a treatment. What I tend to do is when I'm in the bath and I'm sitting back 
the bath watching a show. I'll get some of this and foam it up with water and sort of apply it to my chest and my upper back, almost like a mask. And then I'll let it sit there and sort of semi-mask with it while I'm lying back in the bath watching a show. And I feel like it has really made a difference in just calming down. But I think that I like the Necessaire one better. And I have talked about this on my channel pretty recently. I actually did like a, a sponsored mention for Necessaire. But I wanted to include it because I was talking about these other body exfoliators. I like it because it has scrubbies in it. And I feel like, especially when it comes to those parts of the body which have tougher skin on them than the face, unclogging pores and dealing with clogged pores, it actually helps a lot to scrub away, physically scrub away the dead skin cells that are on the surface so that the acids, and this also has acids in it, can penetrate. I like to use this and then this. So this to kind of provide that physical exfoliation and then treatment with this product, which has so much glycolic acid in it. But this also has some acids in it. So if I was just going to have only one, I want it to be this because it does both. Because I have both, though, I've been using them in tandem. I also like that this is fragrance-free. I just really like the Necessaire products. This is another one that does what this does. So this is the Kosas Sport Good Body Skin AHA and Enzyme Exfoliating Wash. So again, this doesn't have any scrubbies in it. It's just a regular feeling foaming body wash, but it has a lot of alpha hydroxy acids in it, so it's going to help calm down the skin. However, this is a really strong smell, and I'm just not sure that I like it. Yeah, it's it says transportive scent features notes of jasmine, sandalwood, and vanilla. And I usually love both sandalwood and vanilla, but there's something maybe about the jasmine that makes it go very fruity. And it smells like a little bit of a sickly cologne, like an inexpensive cologne that somebody is wearing way too much of. An awkward guy. Actually, it smells like an awkward guy wearing too much cologne. I'm sorry, Kostas, because here's the thing. I think it actually does work. I think it works just as well as the one from Glytone. And so I actually have continued to use it even though I don't like the smell because I see results from it. Also, it's a huge bottle compared to this little one. I'm not sure how much this retails for, but this I feel like I can really slather it on. I also will use it in tandem with the one from Necessaire. I appreciate that this is a good product. I mean, Kostas really did it. It does what it says it's going to do, but I wouldn't buy it again because of the smell. Okay, we got through the first category, and I have some other body products, but I'm going to mix it up with a non-body category just so that we're not doing like a whole bunch of body. Let's do Paula's Choice Masks. Category is Paula's Choice Masks that I haven't talked about. Paula's Choice sent me a couple of products. If I remember correctly, they let me request. They were like, which kinds of things do you use? And I was like hydrating masks for the face, like hydrating cream masks. And so they sent me these two. It's interesting because I have radically different feelings about each of them. On the face of it, they seem like they do kind of the same thing or are kind of the same thing. So this is the Super Hydrate Overnight Mask. And this is the Hydrating Treatment Mask. In the instructions for both of them, they say, use on clean skin, apply a generous layer all over face and neck. And the thing is, the Overnight Mask says, rinse thoroughly. But then it says, oh no, okay. Okay, so it says leave on for at least 20 minutes, rinse thoroughly. For optimal results, leave on overnight as the last step in your skincare routine. And on this one, it says leave on overnight as the last step in your skincare routine. So they're, they both are overnight masks, even though this one says it's overnight mask and this one doesn't. Basically, it's like two tubes of really hydrating stuff that you can leave on overnight or not, as the case may be. But here's the situation. This one is runny. It's like a serum. It's just super dribbly and runny and definitely not the kind of thing that I would be able to leave on overnight as the last step of my skincare routine unless I used a really thin layer. Like, do you see it dripping and, and dribbling? And it's just, it's thin. You know what I mean? When I, when I think about an overnight mask, I think of something really thick, really thick that holds its shape, like thicker than mayonnaise, that I can put on like a layer of icing like icing a cake. And this, despite being billed as an overnight mask, it could not be less 
that. I've been using it in the bath because I just, I want to mask with it because I actually do feel like it is hydrating. Like I do get results from it. It's just cosmetically, it's so the opposite of what I would want it to be like. I mean, in terms of the texture. So I use it in the bath because I can't make a mess there. So when I'm sitting back watching Love on the Spectrum in the bath with a thick layer of glytone exfoliating body wash all over my chest, I will often squeeze out some of this and put it onto my face and then I can sit back and let it soak in even though it's kind of dripping. I can leave it for the recommended at least 20 minutes and doesn't make a mess because I'm in the bath. So I've been making use of it and I do think it's good, but I absolutely would not buy that. It's so thin and runny for a mask. However, this one, the hydrating treatment mask is thick, thick, my friends. I don't even need to waste it to show you how thick it is. Do you see that? Yeah, and now it's so thick that it held its shape and it's going back in the tube. I'll use that later. This is a fantastic slugging product, last step in my nighttime skincare routine product. It's really thick. It's really nourishing. It's cosmetically exactly what I would wish for it to be. A little goes quite a long way because it's so thick and my skin feels really soft in the morning when I wake up if I've used this product. This is a smash hit. And if I ran out of everything that I use for this kind of thing, I might consider buying this one. You know what I mean? Like if I needed something like this, this one would be on the table. I haven't tried all that much from Paula's Choice and I've been very impressed by this. Let's move on to another category of face product face skin product, because I feel like that's what we're really here for. I mean, the body stuff, I, I have to talk about it sometime, and so I've put it into this video, but you know, we're really here to hear about skincare that goes on the face. This category is treatment products, facial treatment products, which because I use tretinoin, which is retinol, and my skin is kind of sensitized, I can't test as many treatment products as I used to. So you know, things that are really exfoliating, really acidic in that way, I tend to stay away from. My skin isn't as sensitive as it was when I was first getting used to using tretinoin, but still I'm not going in with like AHAs and BHAs on my face like I used to. I used to go all in for those kinds of things. So these are like treatment products of other kinds. They're mild enough that I'm able to use them and give you some feedback on them. This is from Bubble, which is a fairly new skincare brand. And it says it's a tone and texture serum. It's a vitamin C serum that also has niacinamide in it. And you know, vitamin C is a little bit of an unstable ingredient. It's a difficult one to package. If you're really obsessed with getting super pure, intense, unadulterated vitamin C straight onto your skin first thing in the morning, like I used to be before I started tretinoin, vitamin C was like a really important ingredient to me. And now I feel like everything kind of has to take a back seat to tretinoin. And I've been worried about incorporating a really powerful vitamin C with the Tret. I've been worried that it would cause my skin to peel. So I have put off like getting the one from Timeless again and trying to reincorporate it again. But when this came in the mail from Bubble, I was like, oh, well, I'll try it. And I expected it to be a little bit more mild, a little bit more pedestrian of a brightening serum than those like straight up intense vitamin C serums that I used to use. And I do think that it probably is that, but I also feel like it has worked well. I feel like it has brightened my skin a little bit. I think the niacinamide has helped. It's also cosmetically elegant. I usually just squirt a pump into and mix it in with, ever, with whatever I'm using first thing in the morning. I use a pump first thing in the morning. At this point, I've almost used it up because I find it really easy to use. It's easy to remember to use because it's yellow. It's right there on the vanity. It's easy to pump. I feel like I've been using it without like remembering that I'm using it, without thinking that much about using it, and then just feeling like it adds some hydration and some calming and brightening into my routine. I could see myself using it up and then recycling the packaging and then forgetting that I ever had it. Like that's how little of an impression it's making on me. So it's not as though it's gripped me by my lapels and been like, I am the one that will solve your skin woes. But I'm here to tell you that if you've been considering Bubble or you've been wondering if this is an effective product, it absolutely is. And I'm really glad they sent it and I'm really glad that I've been using it. And who knows, maybe I'll miss it when it's gone. This is another one that's like a texture product but it's it's gentle enough that it works with the Tret that I'm using. It says it's a skin refining serum and it's from, again, a new brand called Han. It says it's made with skin polishing fruit acids, gluconolactone, and squalane. The phrase skin polishing 
and the concept of fruit acids has felt very approachable to me with my sensitized skin. You know what I mean? I love skin refining products. I love the idea of tone and texture refining, but I'm worried about using something too harsh that's going to cause my skin to peel. So I feel like polishing fruit acids, that has felt really friendly to me. And indeed, I feel like this has helped with the tone and texture of my skin, similar to this one. I've been like using them together. In the morning, I will just like squirt a pump of this and you only need a little bit. It specifies just one pump. It smells good. I got it on my nose. It smells good. It smells like cherries. I like it so much. This is one that I could see myself actually buying again. So I was saying that the bubble one, I think it works well, but I could totally see myself forgetting about it after I finish the bottle. This I think I might miss because I feel like it has been making my skin feel really smooth and moisturized. It's been providing a protective layer and it's been giving me just a little bit of boost of brightening and retexturizing, but again, without being too harsh. It just, it feels like it's balancing. And then this, actually, this is something that I bought. This wasn't PR. It's from the Inky List, which is one of those brands that provides like single ingredient or, you know, star ingredient skincare products, and it's tranexamic acid. It says it helps reduce the appearance of hyperpigmentation, and I got this because of a comment. One of you in the comments, like a couple months ago, said that you thought that I had a highly vascular face and that I could benefit from tranexamic acid. And you know, my redness, the redness on my skin is like the bane of my existence. So I thought why not? Especially because I think this was $10 or something. And basically this one acid that's supposed to help with having a vascular face is the ingredient. I started using it right when I got it and I, you know, I shouldn't even be talking about this today because I started using it right when I got it. My impression was that it was helping and then I rearranged stuff in my vanity and it got put away in a drawer and I forgot to keep using it. So I was about to be like, yeah, I started using it and I think it worked. And then I realized that I actually haven't tested it enough to be able to say that with authority. Let it be known that I'm using this and I'm going to try to remember to uh, put it back on top of my vanity and add in a little squirt in my morning skincare and a little squirt in my evening. That's what I was intending to do and I just didn't do it for long enough. What I can say is that it's cosmetically elegant. It doesn't pill. It blended in with my other products. It soaked in well. It didn't cause me any problems. It doesn't have a smell. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing about it that was like, ah, oh, no, this isn't going to work. But I can't say yet whether or not this has solved the problems of my vascular face, my highly vascular face. Okay, category is cleansers. And we've got an extremely dramatic spectrum of cleansers here. I'll give you the bad first. This. I don't even know where this came from. I don't really know anything about this brand, Daily Practice, but they sent me this called Eye Revive, and it says three-in-one, cleanse, hydrate, remove makeup. It is specifically for cleansing the eye area, formulated for the delicate skin around your eyes, is what it says. And the directions are gently shake the product, use two or three pumps, gently wash over closed eyes, it's like, a, it has like a foaming pump, which is kind of fun. This is what the bottle looks like. Promising, right? I was actually excited when it came in the mail because I was like, yes, a dedicated eye makeup cleanser. You know what I mean? It's like I could just cleanse because when I have eye makeup on and I go to wash my face, it's all about getting the eyes first. First, it's about like using a balm or something to dissolve what's on my eyes and then I go to the rest of the face and then I go on to the second cleanse. So I was like, wow, it'd be really cool to have something I can just use on my eyes then move on to the other steps of cleansing. But how's this for an a third instruction? Gently wash over closed eyelids. Avoid direct contact with eyes. I mean, I think that it's saying don't get it in your eyes, but we all know that you can't really wash like mascara, like ma eye makeup off your eyes without getting a little bit of the thing a little bit into your eyes. Like avoid direct contact with eyes. Is that supposed to mean that it's not healthy to get it in your eyes? It's not good for your eyes? Or does it mean what I shortly discovered when I started using it, that it stings your eyes? Because it does. Let me tell you. This three-in-one cleanse, hydrate, remove makeup product, which you're supposed to gently wash over closed eyelids, no matter how gently you wash it over your closed eyelids, it will sting. 
it stings like no tomorrow. It's like the one requirement of eye makeup remover or facial cleanser for me that I use to cleanse my eyes. The one requirement other than the baseline requirement, which is that it effectively remove eye makeup. The one requirement is that it not sting my eyes. This stings my eyes. And let me tell you what else. It doesn't really remove makeup very effectively. I was finding myself gently washing this over my closed eyes, trying my best to avoid direct contact with eyes, stinging, eyes stinging, and then I would have to go back in with a balm cleanser to get off my mascara. What a fail. What were they thinking, actually? I, I like actually really want to know if anyone tested it. It didn't go well between this product and me. I stopped trying. Usually, I really try to get through products and get good use out of them, and with that one, I stopped trying. However, my friends. Let me introduce you to the Aven Tolerance. It has a dash over the E. That might not be how it's pronounced. Lotion, extremely gentle cleanser. So you know how I'm always looking, you might not know, but let me tell you, I'm always looking for a really good first cleanser. I feel like the world is awash in great second cleansers and a good first cleanser is hard to find. And by first cleanser, I mean the cleanse that removes makeup, breaks down any kind of oils and debris, that are on the skin and just helps to get the process started, emulsifying everything that's on your skin. Then the second cleanse for me is something a little bit more soapy. I actually don't have any second cleanses right now. I'm still using, they take longer to get through in my experience. So I'm still using the ones that I've talked about before, the youth to the people one, the Elemis one, <laughs> I'm still using. They just last forever. But the first cleanse, I feel like I go through it faster. I need more of it. For that reason, I'm always looking for an affordable one where there's quite a lot in the bottle. The thick balm ones, I tend to go through them really quickly because I use a bunch each time. This, it's like, where have you been all my life? It's perfect because it's a, it's that watery lotion consistency. It has a very slippery sort of soothing feeling, like really, really calming and gentle on the skin. And it emulsifies makeup beautifully. I feel like it's treating and calming and gently cleansing my skin. It feels like a liquid cold cream. If you think about like old school Pond's cold cream as a makeup remover, this is like a liquid cold cream. The only thing that would make it better for me would be if it were in um, like a pump bottle instead of being in this bottle, which I've like broken the flip cap off of because I probably dropped it in the shower. When I use this up, and this was PR, they sent this to me. When I use this up, I might try to buy if they have it like a bigger bottle. What I'm trying to say is I will buy it again because it is to me the perfect first cleanser. And if they have a bigger bottle that has a pump, I'll buy that one because that I haven't checked yet if they have that, but that is what would make this perfect to me. Aven, I think, is like a French drugstore brand. Hopefully it's not super expensive. I actually haven't looked it up yet, but I've been assuming that it's at least affordable, if not a budget option. I guess we'll find out together in this video because I'll be linking it. I have just absolutely loved using this as a first cleanser. It's perfect to me. Okay, let's go back to uh, body. Let's do the category of after shower body treatments, which you know I'm kind of picky about because I don't like a bunch of wet, slimy lotion on my skin, right? My favorite thing is body oil after the shower. My friend Simbri gave me this amazing gift. It's a bottle of OC Malibu body oil. I have loved it so much. I might actually have talked about this before. I can't can't remember because I've had it for a while. Clearly, I've almost used it up. It's a really thick but spreadable oil, and I use it on my legs after I shave them. And it makes my legs so smooth. I actually, t what I do is, I don't use it all the time because again, it's really, it's special. I think it's kind of expensive. It's also intense. It's kind of a lot. But if I take a really long bath, I have what I call the A bath, and then what I call the B bath. A bath is like when I'm doing the absolute most. I get all the stuff, I get the bubbles, I watch a show, I stay in the bath for as long as I can, and you know, I shave off any of my body hair that I feel like shaving off. I mask and then I wash off the mask and then I mask again. I just set myself up to really like spend time in the tub and have the full experience, like the big bath, the A bath. B bath is like, I really want to take a bath because I just need a moment or because I'm cold or because I really want to sleep well that night or something. Maybe I just use a little bit of bath salt. Maybe I'm just reading on my Kindle or something rather than like watching a full Marvel film. 
<laughs> you know, there's A bath and there's B bath. If I've taken an A bath, A bath will often like extend to the hour after the bath where I'll get out of the A bath and then I'll put something all over my body while my skin is really damp and porous. This often. And then I will put on like long sleeve pajamas and then I'll kind of like cook in the body oil and give it time to soak into my skin. And during that time, sometimes I'll paint my nails or something and like finish the movie if I started watching a movie in a bath. I don't do it that often. A bath is like maybe twice a month, okay? Okay. It's actually been a while since I've had an A bath and talking about it like this is making me want to do it. But when I take an A bath and then I put this all over my body and then I put on the long sleeve pajamas and then I cook in the body oil. Oh man, my skin feels amazing the next morning. Amazing. And it smells really, really, really good. Kind of citrusy, but spa like as well, but in a fresh way, not in a boring way. Mm. It's a great product. I brought that up just to tell you about how great it is. That would be, this is like a great gift. And I'm not, I'm saying that partly because I received it as a gift and it was such a great gift. And I'm also saying it because it's a little bit on the pricey side. But I have been broadening my mind, my horizons a little bit about body lotion. I actually do like the Necessaire body serum a lot as well. And I talked about that in the other video, the Necessaire video. That's why I didn't bring it down here. I like that a lot. And I've been using it in tandem with this. If I take an A bath, either I use a, this really thick body oil all over and that's kind of like it and I'm cooked or I will combine the necessary serum with a lotion that I layer on top of it. Soft Services has impressed me so much. Look at the packaging. It's just so beautiful. It's really big and it's aluminum. The pump is juicy and it just, I just feel like they designed everything so aesthetically and it's it strikes this really interesting balance between kind of quirkiness which I know this isn't this doesn't seem that quirky but the unit cartons the wrapper that the exfoliating buffer bar comes in the overall aesthetic it has like this quirky side but it's also extremely artistic and polished and there's just something about the way that everything's presented with soft services that is really checking my boxes so there's all of that then this body lotion has urea in it, which is an exfoli. It's like a gently exfoliating skin softening and smoothing ingredient that is fantastic that I love and that isn't in very many skincare products, let alone body lotions. I've never seen it in a body lotion and it is in this. It's spreadable, fast absorbing, not oily. It's everything you'd want a body lotion to be. This is the daily toning lotion for body, the Korea cream. In addition to urea, it has colloidal oatmeal, which is a really great ingredient for sensitive skin too. It's just a really, really good body lotion. And it's it's caused me to kind of come around to body lotions. I've really been enjoying it. Soft Services also released recently this shower gel. And this is supposed to be just like a really, really sensitive skin friendly shower gel. It says it's good for frequent showers, chronically dry, itchy, sensitive skin, reducing irritation, redness, that kind of thing. It's just very that. I love using this. I've actually, when I picked it up just now, I was like, oh no, because I can feel that I've used more than half of it already. I just tend to default to it in the shower because again, it has this big juicy pump. It makes my skin feel taken care of. It has this lovely aesthetic. I'm just into what Soft Services is doing. However, they also sent me this smoothing solution, which is like an intense gel exfoliator that you are supposed to use like on bumpy skin, crepey skin, ingrown hairs, underarms, that kind of thing. And it has 10% lactic acid in it. It's like a really intense treatment and it's a gel and it's just kind of a lot. I do think it works and I just, I don't use it because it's just, it makes me feel kind of sticky. I feel like maybe if I was really intensely desperate to deal with some ingrown hairs or some KP or something like that, then maybe I would be more willing to put up with kind of the jelly stickiness and the kind of lactic acid -y smell. Because just as with the other ones, the presentation is is impeccable. I do wish that I wanted to use it because I love this tube so much, how it feels, how it looks, but I have to be honest and tell you that it's just languishing. Okay, those are the body products. <sighs> There's just one category left. Actually, no, there's two. This little category will knock it out right quick. This category is like weird skin device things. And this isn't really a device. Frownies facial patches. They are like wrinkle smoothing 
stickers. So they're basically like big postage stamps, big stiff postage stamps that are perforated. They have like this gummy adhesive that's dry and you wet the adhesive with a spray or with water to make them sticky. And then you stick them on places where you get wrinkles overnight because you're like scrunching up your face. The forehead is where most people would use a thing like this. When I've used them, a couple of times I've used them, I've like spread apart that part of my forehead where I get 11s and then stuck the thing on and then it like keeps it flat. It's It dries really stiff and flat and it keeps that part of your face flat, keeps you from scrunching it up overnight and presumably prevents wrinkles from forming or helps to smooth and relax those muscles. Kind of like a non-invasive version of Botox. Freezes the muscles physically from the outside so that you don't get wrinkles. I do think it works. And actually when I used them, when I first got them and I was all fired up, and actually I bought this. <laughs> this wasn't VR either. I bought these. When I first got them and I was like, oh, I'm going to have such smooth, I'm going to be so smooth, like right between my eyes. And I started using them. Yeah, I could see a difference right away. The sort of faint, constant lines that I've developed there that are always there, they were flatter in the morning when I took this off. And I was like, whoa, if I use these every single night, I'm going to have a really smooth forehead. I'm going to have really smooth between my eyebrows area and those 11s are eventually going to really melt away or at the very least be stopped in their tracks. But y'all, I just don't have the time, the energy, the dedication. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm here to tell you that if you spend more time and put every ounce that you can into this kind of thing, this is something you might want to know about, especially if for some reason you don't want to go the distance and get Botox, but you are really concerned about that part of your face. This might be a great option for you, but they just sit there. I don't, sometimes I feel like it's a struggle even to get my teeth flossed and I rally, you know, I apply myself, I floss my teeth, but on nights like that, which is like a lot of nights, I'm definitely not going to be applying one of these. In this way, I'm just living in the moment. It's like I care more about preserving my sanity on a nightly basis, getting to bed five minutes earlier, just living in my skin than I do about those, those wrinkles. That's just how I feel right now. And maybe that will change over time. Maybe I'll look back on myself 10 years from now and be like, Hannah, you were a fool. You should have been wearing those frownies every night. But wrinkles come for us all, don't they? I mean, past a point, if you don't have any, that's a little weird. I don't know if I'm fully articulating all of the reasons, but I'm just telling you that I have these frownies. They do work and I'm not using them. This, however, I love. This is the Dermaflash Dermaplaner. Turns on with a little button and uh, it has the blade slides in like that. And should I tell you this? I'm going to tell you, but this is totally unauthorized what I'm about to say. It might be really bad advice. They say that the blades are single use on these. Dermaplaning is like shaving peach fuzz and also removing like the, de the top layer of dead skin from your face. They say that the blades are single use. So you use it one time and then you throw it away. But I use them several many times before I throw them away because they're only like five. They sent this to me and they sent me like five little blades. And I don't want to, after five uses, buy a pack of replacement blades. I'm not sure how much the replacement blades cost, cost, but I just feel like they work fine. I think they work fine multiple times in a row. I mean, I think maybe for sanitation reasons, you're not supposed to use it more than once, but I think they just want you to buy blades upon blades blades upon blades. Sometimes I like wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol just to make sure and then it works fine. Maybe it's slightly less effective like the second and third time but I've been using the blades over and over again and making them last. It's just interesting because with the frownies I'm like I can't be bothered but with the dermaplaning every couple of weeks I can feel like the peach fuzz growing back, feel a little bit of dullness on my skin, just feel like you know I'm exfoliating, I'm washing my skin, I'm doing everything they should do, I'm masking and still it just doesn't and have that kind of glow, that smoothness, that plumpness that I want. And then I'm like, aha, it's time for a dermaplaning. We'll get it and I'll do it. And it's an absolute pleasure. And it doesn't feel like the drag that it is to use the frownies or sometimes to floss my teeth. But it's probably because it's just once in a while. You know, it's not like every single night. I just do it once in a while. I do it when I feel like I really need to. And it is great. It just, it makes my skin smoother. My skincare absorbs better. My makeup goes on better. There's just kind of this ineffable glow that results from it. And I do really like this vibrating automated one. I do really, really like it. It works really well. So 
category was uh, like weird stuff. And one is a no and one is a yes. Now, the final massive behemoth of a category is hydrators. My most used category maybe of skincare product and the one that I have the most different types of going at one time. I really have not been keeping an eye on my hair throughout this video. And I feel as though I'm going to discover something when I, when I edit. I'm going to discover that something horrible is going on. I'm so sorry if that's the case. Okay. Okay, most of these hydrators are like slugging creams or heavy overnight creams, really thick, super moisturizers. And I'm going to knock the other ones out first. So Bliss, do you remember Bliss Body Care? Bliss has launched face products and they're actually really good. They sent them to me. I was like, oh, Bliss. And then I started using them and I was like, oh, Bliss. So this one is... Uh, a watery serum. It says it's a pH balanced or pH balancing probiotic formula, which probiotics and skincare, I don't know. I don't know how good that science is, but I do think that physically this, it's like a milky toner, is a great barrier builder. And I actually really like it. It's also an aluminum container. Um, I'm going to have to pour it. It's very liquidy. The container, it's nice as aluminum. It's a little bit... It's a, a lot comes out at once because it's just this open, doesn't have a tiny squeezy thing or a pump or anything. And it's very liquid. I'll hold it up and show it to you. It's kind of like pastry cream. You can see that, right? It's like a, a milky serum. It's got a little bit of body, but it, it melts away to being more like a toner pretty quickly. I love a milky serum and it's a particularly gratifying, particularly fortifying one. This is the kind of thing that I'm like packing into my skin by tapping in the evenings before I go in with like tretinoin and then a slugging cream for night or an oil or something like that. And when I do that, especially if I go in with three, four, five layers, patting it in, my skin is very plump and moisturized. A little bit awkward in the delivery mechanism here. I don't know how well that's going to go over with everyone, but I feel like what's in the bottle is pretty good product. And then the other one that's not like a thick overnight cream is also from Han. So remember the brand that made this skin refining serum? They also sent me an oil, a skin refining face oil. It is the restorative face oil. And it says it's made with nine nutrient rich plant oils. And as you can see, I haven't used it nearly as much. I don't know if you can see. The bottle's gotten kind of shaken up, but this bottle's half empty because I use a pump every morning. And this I've only used a little bit of because I just don't use oils that much anymore. Somewhere along the way, I used to love face oils and I still think they're fantastic in theory. I just get little clogged pores easily and somewhere along the way I was like let's cut out oil for a little while and see how it goes. I've never really gotten that into reincorporating it. I really like this oil. I like how it feels going on. I like how it soaks in. It just feels like a very refined lovely well-designed skincare product and it also smells really good. So if I'm gonna use an oil I'm going to use this one and maybe as the weather gets cooler and my skin gets drier and is struggling more I'll be layering this on with all my other nighttime stuff. But in the summer, I just haven't felt the need for oil. And I also feel like my skin has gotten a little bit more oily, actually. Maybe it's this climate. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. But as face oils go, it's a it's a nice medium to lightweight one. You know what I mean? It's not so lightweight as to be like a dry oil, but it's not heavy or greasy. It's a nice one. Now let's talk about heavier kind of night cream style things. A category that I love and that I'm really, really picky about. Hydropeptide has sent me this Hydrolock sleep mask. I was really into this because it specifically says it's a sleep mask. And I I love anything that specifically says it's a sleep mask. Hydro lock kind of implies that it's going to lock in hydration and that I want that. You know what I mean? That's why I'm slugging. The issue for you with this is that it's a gel cream. To be fair to hydropeptide, as gel creams go, it's a pretty beefy one. You know what I mean? Like gel creams tend to melt away almost to the point of being like watery serums. And this, it melts away to be like a very lightweight cream, but it just doesn't have that that stiffness. It doesn't have that presence that causes it to retain a barrier, like a physical barrier, at least not one that's sufficient for me for a sleeping pack. Maybe what I need to do is just to start using it at like the serum stage, like to put it on and then put something thick on on top of it. Psychologically, I've been prevented from doing that because it says that it is an overnight sleeping mask. And so I think it's saying to me, I'm last in your skincare routine, put everything else 
on first and then put me on last because I'm an overnight mask. But texturally, it doesn't lend itself to that. I just haven't gotten much use out of it because every time I almost reach for it, I'm like, oh no, it's too lightweight for slugging. But I do think that it will be effective if I start using it as a layering product underneath some of the heavier products. And speaking of the heavier products, here's another one from Bliss. It came together with the liquidy thing. It says the pre slash postbiotics barrier aid also. I mean, I guess that's the selling point. That's like the, the gig. That's the collection. They're all supposed to be barrier aid products. So this is the ultra hydrating moisturizer concentrate. And you can bet that my interest was peaked when I read that it was a moisturizer concentrate. And rightly so, because look at this. I love this aluminum tube. Yes, that's what we like to see. I'm not going to be able to make it go back in like I was with the Paula's Choice one because it's aluminum. But look at this. Thick. Thick like frosting. It's a great product. It's just a straight up, calming, unscented, final layer, more creamy, moisturizing layer. Perfect for slugging. Really, really good. Again, I'm very impressed by Bliss. They really gave the people what they want if I'm the people when it comes to skincare. I actually can't remember what the main ingredients of this are. Like, I don't remember if it has colloidal oatmeal in it or if it, if it did, it, must, it would probably say it on here, right? Because it's not an active ingredient. I get the sense, for me, it performs just a physical function, right? Like sealing everything in, locking in moisture. That's what I'm looking for in this kind of product. And this performs that very well. So I think that's why it has hasn't really registered with me or I haven't been too fussed about what's in it. What I care about is that texture. This is like the opposite of that, right? This is the Youth to the People Polypeptide Future Cream. I've got to say, I'm very grateful to receive occasional PR from Youth to the People. I really, really like their products. I think that it's really good skincare. And Joe has also gotten along really well with their products. When I do my empties video, you'll see there are a couple Youth to the People empties in my empties bag right now that came from Joe because he has been using what's the main one that he uses? It's like an AHA toner and there's also a skin refining product and his skin, he, it's, he's basically started using all the use of the people that they've sent me and his skin looks amazing. Like, it's worked so well for him. This, however, I kept. And maybe I will give it to Joe because it's good. It's good. It's just a really good, and, you know, my experience with youth to, the, youth to the People indicates that it's probably very well formulated. It's just a really good, well formulated night cream. Peptide night cream, you know. I think peptides are a really good ingredient. And I think that it's serious skincare. They're not messing around. I think it does strengthen and moisturize and firm the skin. But I have have other products, again, things that I've been using for a while that I've talked about before, like my tretinoin and like the One Skin Peptide Serum, like things that I feel like are my chosen products for now that do those fancy things. And in this role, the role of like a night cream, I'm just looking for something to layer on thick, lock everything in, and moisturize. And this is more lightweight than that. And I feel like if you're really into youth to the people like Joe is, or like I kind of am in theory, like I, again, I think it's really good skincare. If you're really into it and you want to use this and you also have dry skin like I do and you really need thick barrier cream at the end of your skincare routine at night, you're gonna need to use this underneath something else. It's gonna be like a treatment product. I feel like it's presenting more as like a thick all-in-one moisturizer being like in a jar like this. But in my mind, it's the kind of thing that would come in a tube and be more of like a layering treatment. So I have found myself excited to try this, but not reaching for it as often as I reach for other night creams like this because it just doesn't have as much of a thickness, not as much of a presence on the skin. And when I do use it, I often end up layering something like this over top of it to seal it all in. However, I've saved the best for last, the creme de la creme. This is pretty recent PR. Ula Henriksen sent this, Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. So marketing-wise, these are doing the same thing thing, right? It's like a high-end fancy moisturizer in a jar that has peptides in it. That's saying it's going to help with elasticity and strength. But whereas this is more of a, this is a youth to the people one, more of a silky cream. Hopefully you can see that. It's more of like a silky thin cream. The Ula Henriksen one is thick. It is thick, 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 thick. So that's the Ula Henriksen one on my middle finger. You can see it has like a chunk hanging off of it and a chunk is holding its shape. That's because it's thick. It has a 
light, maybe very slightly fruity smell, but not it's not too intense. And it does have a little bit of sort of a gel cream quality. It's like a little bit translucent. Usually that's not a good sign for me in a product like this. It is kind of melty. It doesn't have that intense cake icing layer feeling on the skin the way that, for example, the Polish Choice one does. Like this, of everything we've talked about today, that's the thickest. That's the one that's like body yaddy 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 yaddy. You know what I mean? This is like the Megan the Stallion of the night creams. But the Ulla Henriksen one, it's still serving slugging. You know what I mean? It's doing a little bit in its own way, but it's still really, really giving me that barrier. And I just feel my skin like drinking it in. My skin just really, really likes it. It's so pleasurable to apply. It really holds its own. It's just nice. So I feel like this, it has that peptide boost and it also performs the physical function that I usually want at the very end of my skincare routine at night. Whereas this one just has that peptide boost and is a bit moisturizing as well. Both great products. It's just that the Ulla Henriksen one is suiting me a little bit better. I'm going to give this to Joe and try to convince him to start using it as fall turns into winter uh, and hopefully he will. And that is it. That is it. I made it through everything about which I intended to speak today. And I hope that this was either informative or entertaining or both. This is the kind of video that I like to, to watch even when I'm not intending to buy any of the things. Like <laughs> even if I'm not in the market for skincare, I will sit down and just like hang out during a video like this. And so I hope that it performed that function for some of you. And you know, if there's something you've been looking for and I talked about something that'll serve that exact purpose for you, that's fantastic. I just hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> and I'm going to go now. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Again, subscribe, please, if you're not subscribed. But more than that, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 